In this video, I'll be showing you how I made this nano cube terrarium. I'll leave links to most of the materials I've used in the description below. Let's get into the build. Here's the tank that I'll be using for today's build. It measures 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters and is made using low iron glass. This eliminates that green look that some tanks have. For the light, I'm gonna be using this budget friendly clip on LED. Let's start with the drainage. For this, I'm gonna be using Leaker. It's lightweight, but more importantly, it's extremely porous. This means it will absorb and hold water within each piece, resulting in a greater volume of drainage and a more stable humidity. I carefully spread it out, ensuring there was no high or low points before moving on to the next step. On top of the leaker, I added a substrate barrier. For this, I used window screen mesh. This will help keep the substrate outside of the drainage layer. Although it's not completely necessary, as I already use it in my substrate mix, I added a layer of charcoal. This will remove any impurities from the water inside the terrarium. This is tree fern fiber. I'm gonna be using it in the foreground as moss grows really well on top of it. You don't need to use this and moss will grow happily enough on the substrate. But I had some spare from another project so I thought I'd use it. I cut some pieces in half to go right at the front. Now I'm gonna be adding the substrate. I'm using a slight different mix to what I usually use, with the main difference being aqua soil. I'll put the mix up on screen now if you want to try making it yourself. I use the back of my hand to gently pack the soil down into place. I plan on bringing the substrate up a lot higher, but if I did that now, it would likely fall down towards the front. So I'm going to put in some hardscape that would act as a barrier. For this, I'm using black lava rock. Its detailed textured surface make it perfect for a terrarium this size. I had already been playing around with the hardscape for a few days prior, so I knew roughly where they were going to go. I left a gap down the middle that will form a path later on in the build. With these in place, I went on to add more substrate. And as you can see, the rocks are doing their job. Just like before, I continued to pack it in place. I'm using more lava rocks to build another layer behind the one I just made. This will allow me to get the substrate even higher. This time I used a tool to gently pack it down. These layers will act as different planting areas, but more importantly, they help improve the sense of depth inside the terrarium. I did the same for the right side. I then used a brush to clear off any substrate on the rocks. Next, I added some more hardscape in the form of spiderwood. I just pulled these pieces out of an old fish tank, which is why they're wet. Like I said, I had been playing around with the hardscape for a couple days, so I had a general idea of their placement. The vision was for the wood to look like roots creeping over the rocks. Using a small piece of lava rock, I propped it into place. Here's the final placement of the spiderwood. Before securing them in place, this branch needs to be trimmed down as it's poking out the top. To do this, I used some pliers. It's always a good idea to snap the branches instead of cutting them 
as it leaves a more natural look. To secure the hardscape into place, I'm going to be using super glue and tissue. This is a very popular method that is perfectly safe to use in a live terrarium. I simply place some tissue in the connection points between the wood and rock and then soak it in super glue. The result is a strong bond between the two. I repeated this throughout the hardscape until everything was securely locked down. Next I use some small spiderwood branches to add a little more detail. I'm placing them to look as if they're coming out the piece of wood on the left. And once again I secured them into place using the super glue and paper towel method. Next I took this branch of spiderwood and pinned it down to the lava rock. I then secured it using super glue. To cover up the exposed glue, I use a mix of crushed up aqua soil and lava rock. I simply applied some more glue to the place I want to cover and then sprinkle on the mixture. Here's the result. I continued to do this throughout the terrarium until all the exposed glue was covered. Time for the plants. I started off with this begonia species. I'll put its full name up on screen as there's no chance I can pronounce it. Let me know in the comments if you can. It often sends out these beautiful yellow flowers that will be a nice addition to the terrarium. I planted the majority of it towards the back of the terrarium. Although these cuttings have minimal roots at the moment, they'll soon send out new roots and begin to grow. I then planted a smaller patch here in the midground. Here's where the terrarium really comes to life. These are all plants that came out the same fish tank as the spiderwood. Most of them are Bucephalandra species, and a few Anubias and Crips as well. Although they are often grown underwater, they do grow great inside a terrarium so long as the humidity is kept high. As you can see, some of them have holes in their leaves. This is likely due to deficiencies and low light in their previous setup. However, the majority of the plants look super healthy. These plants are epiphytes, so it's very important that their rhizomes are not planted into the substrate. If they were, they would quickly rot and die. As you can see, this one is mounted on a rock, so I simply left it on it and planted it towards the back the roots will soon find its way into the substrate. For the plants that weren't mounted on anything, I simply wedged them in the gaps and cracks around the terrarium. When making a terrarium, it's very important not to let the plants dry out. I regularly sprayed them to prevent this. Here's the planting so far. Still plenty to go, but as you can see, it's already brought it to life. I should mention these are multiple different species of Bucephalandra. I know one is Bucephalandra wavy green, but the others I'm not so sure of. If you know, please let me know in the comments. I wedged some small pieces in this rock and placed it in the foreground. I then planted some small crypts around the scape. Unlike the majority of the plants in this terrarium, these can actually be planted in the substrate. They shouldn't grow too much bigger than they are right now, but hopefully they should put on some size on their leaves. For the central path of the terrarium, I used this HC Cuba. Its miniature leaves should lend itself nicely to the scale. I washed out the nutrient-rich liquid it was grown in before trimming off the base. I then split it up into multiple different chunks. 
I'm planting them down the centre of the terrarium. Over time they'll send out runners and carpet and fill in the spaces. Here's how the terrarium's looking so far. Some work is still needed but we're definitely getting closer to what I had in mind. I used some smaller pieces of lava rock to create a more natural look around the terrarium. These will help transition from the larger rocks. This terrarium wouldn't be complete without some moss. I've got some Christmas moss that's been growing submerged, which means underwater, and some that's been growing inside a terrarium. I also have some coral moss, which is actually a liverwort. Once again, it's an aquatic plant that can also grow inside a terrarium. I'm going to start with the immersed growing Christmas moss. This moss should have no trouble acclimating to the terrarium, as it's already been growing in terrarium conditions. The other two may take a week or two to settle in. Next I start planting the coral moss. I'm planting this in chunks so it's less likely to dry out. I'm hoping it will grow and form dense patches that will help bring some nice detail and interest to the terrarium. Now I'm planting the submerged growing Christmas moss. I'm trimming it up to make it easier to place around the terrarium and it will also stimulate new growth. I predominantly place this moss in the foreground. The tree fern fibre is a perfect material for the moss to grow on. It stays damp whilst not being wet. I felt like the terrarium needed some climbing plants. So I started with this oak leaf fig. I then planned to plant this Macgravia umbellata red towards the back. But once I got it in, I felt like its leaves were too big and it took away from the sense of scale down the middle of the terrarium. So instead I used Macgravia small round and I think it was a much better fit. Next I added springtails. As I'm sure you know, these will go around and eat any mold or decaying matter they can find. This is especially important in this terrarium as I used a large amount of spiderwood, which is prone to grow in mould. I then gave the terrarium a good spray down. Before I get to the issue, I should mention that I added some detailed branches down the lava rock. I think this really helps bring out the tree root look I was going for. As you can see, everything seems to be doing well, and for the most part, you'd be correct. But if you look closer, the HC Cuba is definitely on its way out. I've never used this plant in a terrarium before, so I wasn't sure how it would react. This obviously isn't ideal, but you would never learn anything if you didn't try anything new. This patch on the wood, however, is doing great and has already started growing. My best guess is that it didn't like sitting on the substrate. I pulled it all out and instead I'm going to be replacing it with some weeping moss. This is a fast growing species of moss that should have no trouble carpeting through the centre of the terrarium. I have been growing this in a terrarium so I don't have to worry too much about it acclimating. I then placed on this custom glass lid and left a gap at the front. This will help keep the front glass of the terrarium clear. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this slightly different type of terrarium build. If you want to learn how to make something a little more basic and beginner friendly, watch this.